some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Now, it's been almost two weeks since uh, Chili himself has posted any updates on his uh, incarceration in, uh, in what he calls the dungeon. But that doesn't mean he's uh, not existing at any uh, pace or anything like that. He's still trying to uh, write up his... Uh, well, his appeals, and, uh, well, Patrick Darcy has a thing or two to say about it, and uh, for that matter, so do I. So, so let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy good old Patrick tear apart the grammatically incorrect and uh, poor legal structure that Chile has to offer on his uh, appeals. So Chile gets the last word. You file your ap appeal, your opening brief. The people respond to it, and then you file what's called a reply brief, the last word. This is the reply brief, the last word, plus the appellate court asks for supplemental briefing. And uh, I think that it doesn't do the job. So let's take a look. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it does, Patrick. I mean, I can already spot right here at the top of this paper right here. Uh, one mistake, you don't ever put reply on anything that's a reply. I mean, I've written thousands of emails and uh, hundreds of essays. And, well, uh, you don't ever put reply on there because it's just generally not necessary. They already know it's a freaking reply. I've entered the twilight zone, so now I'm in black and white. Here is the reply brief, and uh, once again, it's not too impressive. You don't have to simply say you're replying to the respondent's answer to the appellant's opening brief. You just simply say, appellant's reply. We continue with the ransom note style of formatting with capital words in the middle of sentences. Comes now, like I said, I'm glad that they learned how to spell that correctly. Yeah, Chili, I know we're going to be grammar Nazis uh, with you, but uh, it would behoove you to understand that uh, the English language does have certain rules, uh, so you might want to follow them. Otherwise, you're just going to look like an ed uneducated buffoon every time you try to write something. I mean, it, it's it's not exactly a rocket science, dude. So, uh, yeah, you might want to invest in some... Uh, help and i'll explain that later on because they have a tendency to create typos within their documents which never impresses anyone jose de castro by and through his attorney of record who else you don't need to say that hereby submits well you're just submitting you don't have to hear by anything and then this would be in quotations respondents answer and it's not respondents answer to appellant's opening brief you're replying to the respondents answer think they would get that <laughs> This brief, capital B, doesn't need to be that way, is made in base. How about is some, is based upon, you don't say made and, already on file herein, the points and authorities, which sounds like a motion, attached here too. Well, attached, what do you mean attached? You got to look for it. And any oral arguments, wrong, that's plural, adduced at the time of hearing. And then they left the word on out this matter. And they can delete that and on and just put a period there. Uh, which needs a comma there. Anyway, uh, arguments, First Amendment protections, whatever. In this case, you'll see the constant mistake of a quotation mark period. And the word clearly, I told you to avoid that. Um, they also use a lot of uh, sentence, I call them interrupters. In this case, we'll see a lot of that. Began a filming a police interaction from 10 feet or more. The police interaction, see police interaction, police interaction. Comply with officer demands to back up. Wrong. He didn't. He actually said no. Provocative, challenging speech throughout this brief. He doesn't exactly describe what that provocative and challenging speech is if he's seeking First Amendment protection for it. That's a mistake. I started rewriting everything here. The state never disputed Mr. Castro's constitutional right to film the police. That's another thing through this brief. They keep talking about the right to film. No one's contesting that. Why are you arguing it? Why is he arguing this point, Patrick? Well, there are two possible reasons here. Number one, he's just so fixated on that uh, argument that he's got blinders on and doesn't realize that that was never the argument to begin with. Or two, he's just uh, trying to placate his audience because his audience are nothing but a bunch of ignorant 
sheeple who buy buy into everything that he says, no matter how uh, stupid it is. So either way, it still doesn't look good for either Chili or uh, his sycophants. Why are you wasting time? And then with my with my edits, you just eliminate the rest of this. What agreement are we talking about here? To catch the dog somehow obstructed the officer. Really? Um, what are you talking about? The state contends, not repeatedly, get rid of that, that Mr. DeCastro refused to back up as proof he obstructed the officer. See, I got rid of all that extra unnecessary words, including this. At trial, well, where else would it be? Officer Bork, you'd say Bork, testified that he did not back up. Hilarious, because uh, the way they've written this, he then refers to Bork. Now, Bork was supposed to back up to his own commands. They make a colossal mistake in taking a pronoun and misapplying it and putting it in the wrong section. Um, Chili, do you understand the concept of proofreading? Going through your paper over and over again, reading every bit backwards and forwards, uh, so that way you can catch any errors. And believe me, reading your paper backwards does catch errors along the way. And here's another little tip that you need to uh, know, Chili. Uh, just don't trust yourself in reading your papers. Have other people proofread your papers. That way they can find and point out the mistakes in your own grammar. You'll, they'll find things that you missed, of course, because we can't find everything by ourselves. This is supposed to be outside the period quotations with the citation to the authority. Spoke generically about a 21-foot rule. Remember, that's subway, Jared. 21 subways is a 21-foot rule, comma. Get rid of all of this, and that De Castro violated this. No, there really isn't an issue with this 21 foot rule. And then because Bork didn't back up on appeal, here is the, the, the typical like belie they used that before is a bad word, notably on appeal, on appeal, on appeal. At trial, once again, they use the same thing in this case, in Glick, in they, they'll use in many, many times here, typo, all conclusory. A reviewing court can simply review. You can get rid of the word simply. And this, you know, Castro complies. That's uh, the wrong, wrong tense. So I'd be complied. And it's irrelevant anyway. These rhetorical questions, which is waste and chew up time. Even firmly established Supreme Court case law is not the truth. That's just argumentative. It doesn't prove anything. On appeal, notably, they always like to use that one, notably. Well, if it's in the brief, it's supposed to be notable because the idea is that these are mistakes in the Glick case, in Glick uh, activity. We don't care about filming the cops. This is all conclusory. Conclusory means it doesn't prove anything. I don't explain why or how. Uncontradicted federal law. Good luck with that, because uh, anyone who studies case law will notice that there's always contradictions. If there wasn't contradictions in case law, distinctions, whatnot, we wouldn't need appellate courts. Now, would we? This is land of the inn. In their appellate brief, in a footnote, actually in fields, in ironic, whatever, in fields again, in essence, is just ridiculous. All of this is irrelevant. Rodney King, why waste your time talking about it? Yeah, I wonder what Rodney King has to do with all this. I mean, uh, two different cases, two different outcomes, two different scenarios. I mean, Chili, uh, you are not... Uh, uh, out there getting uh, pounded on by the cops. Is, is that how you see yourself? A uh, victim being uh, taken down by the mean old cops? Uh, I mean, is that what you want to be seen as, as a martyr? I mean, yeah, uh, we all know that you want to be seen as a martyr, but the truth is you're nothing more than a uh, grifter trying to get uh, every dime he can out of his... Uh, Ignorant sheeple, you know. I mean, that's all you are. That's all you ever will be. A martyr, you are definitely not. In a footnote, the state appears to take offense to Castro's reliance on the George Floyd. I don't know that you would take offense to any of that. Appears to argue, well, you really want to say what they are stating as opposed to arguing. Ironically, the Fields Court utilized the same exact reasoning as Mr. DeCastro. What does that mean? That's just more fluff. This sentence is so long, I had to take a breath. What I first did is I just started lining out stuff many words here that it just gets in the way of itself so in other words uh chili put a bunch of run-on sentences in there uh chili uh have you ever taken any writing courses at at all outside of uh well 
elementary school. Because even in elementary school, they tell you about run-on sentences and everything like that. It's the basics, man. You need to proofread, 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 and proofread some more. That way you can get all the kinks out of your arguments. But of course, I don't think you've been trained in any kind of writing. I mean, that's what I'm assuming when uh, we go over this. Uh, it goes to Rodney King, the Floyd killing, which has nothing to do with him. Scoured. What do you mean scoured? Why would you even say that? More interrupters next, moreover, ultimately, finally, just ridiculous. These are awkward transi transitions. Nothing in these cases supports the state's position. That's just conclusory. Instead, they further bolster. That's just conclusory. There's no actual analysis. Of course there's no analysis. I mean, has Chile ever really analyzed anything in any of his videos? I mean, he goes into what he says are his interpretations of case laws, but when it comes right down to it, they're all faulty and, uh, well, no analysis whatsoever, just cherry-picking and everything like that. I mean, yeah, uh, that's all it is, is cherry-picking nonsense, and it seems like this is cherry-picking nonsense right here. The state's reliance on the numerous cases cited in their brief either significantly assist, that's just conclusory, has no, adds nothing, comically bad to write an appellate brief, however, in reality, however, ugh, another rhetorical question, notably, once again, we saw that a few pages back, this is a mistake, times, places, and manners, remember it's time, place, and manner, so they've got it plural when it's supposed to be singular. This was already repeated in a prior brief. This is the time to not keep repeating things. You want to keep bringing up new arguments. Rodney King again, provocative, challenging language. You're claiming First Amendment protection, but you're not stating what the language is so that the appellate court even knows what you're talking about. It's not the appellate court's duty to figure out what your arguments are and make them for you. <laughs> Oh, wait, that's a thing? Uh, you have to make the appeal yourself? You have to generate all the work and everything like that yourself? You have to generate the arguments? You have to do this, that, the other, because the appellate courts won't do it for you? Huh, I wonder, Chili. Maybe you should have hired a lawyer. Oh, wait, you did, but you're doing all the work? Well, maybe you should fire that attorney and do it yourself. Oh, wait, never mind, you are doing it yourself. That's why you're failing. That's why uh, there's no coherent sentence structures in this uh, appeal right here. That's why it looks like a bunch of dog shit. No wonder. I mean, a real attorney, like your attorney, probably wouldn't have uh, written something this bad. And if it was your attorney, uh, then maybe you should get your money back. He then grabs Mr. DeCastro in an aggressive manner. Most people, when you grab him, it will be aggressive. Uh, ultimately, we ultimately again problematic for the officer in federal court. How's that? I looked at the federal court uh, case against the cops. The federal judge said there was probable cause to arrest, and it's now hanging by a thread, subject to a motion for summary judgment. So I don't think that this has been too problematic. Another interrupter, unfortunately, provocative. No explanation what that is. Must be overturned. Now we get to the fourth and fourteenth. The first time I heard that one counts one and two. If you ask me, there should be it's, it's plural. Must be dismissed. Very aggressive language. Telling the judge how to think. Additionally, another interrupter did not resist arrest. Conclusory. As he was unlawfully arrested. Conclusory. At trial, where else would this be that the cop was unable to articulate his behavior? Officer simply testified the word simply again. There would be, you would rephrase this with a capital A in brackets. And then all I saw him in recording, which again, I had no issue with. Well, why would you put that in there? Now you're showing that uh, filming is not the issue. You just prove that through his testimony and through citation in the record. Convicted of attempting to obstruct. Well, there are there are attempt crimes. It's not an attempt crime. This is an actual conviction, so that's wrong. Again, another interrupter. Unpublished authority for Stubbs. I know here in California, you don't do that. There's very limited reasons for it. The, the, the Nevada Court of Appeals carefully examined. Why wouldn't they carefully examine? Why would you even say that? Are you saying that in other instances they don't? Uh, the court determined that specific intent is a requirement of the statute. Uh, yeah, that's true, but then there are exceptions. The court further held, how about the court held that, therefore we interpret, you can say the court held that, quote, NRS 
applies, put a bracket here to change the actual word here. So, you know, you're changing from applying to applies only to physical conduct and fighting words. But there's the exception. Blocking the path may amount to obstruction. True. So now you put in the exception that can get you in trouble. In other words, passive aggressive actions can still be considered physical conduct because like the Wilson court said, we cannot write a law that addresses everything. That's true. Another in beginning this one. And he agrees that fleeing would be hindering obstruction. Why would you put that in there? It has no relevance. Uh, the Wilson court determined that NRS prohibits only physical, blah, blah, blah. but this is just restating what you just said. And uh, so it doesn't help you. I I'm looking for analysis. In Wilson, other starts with preposition of in. The real issue. Oh, wow. I'm glad you found that for me, what the real issue is. The court explained the court remanded. Ugh, enunciated. You don't need to do that. Um, you just need to say things in simple terms. Mr. Castro has never seen physically attempting to obstruct the officer. What does that even mean? Uh, this is all speech area. This is all irrelevant, all conclusory. Never willfully resisted the police is all conclusory. Now they're unconstitutional. Another one starting within. Denied state and federal constitutional rights. Still on this stuff. I just started rewriting this just to start cutting down the, the language. During the trial proceedings, you don't need to say that. Just wasted words. How about just saying the, uh, the judge was biased against De Castro? Very good opening sentence. It, it, it sets the tone. Now you got to explain why. But now they're saying it's because he was forced to empty his pockets and because she said she didn't want to be on a YouTube video. That was a rule that she enforced against everyone. And he gets it wrong here. He says defense counsel is also to turn off his phone. Okay, fine. The judge could do that. But the judge said he was a court officer. Failure to demand that the prosecutor turn off her phone or surrender her cell phone to the marshal. I think that's capital M. Well, uh, me did not give up his phone. The judge said specifically that he didn't have to, and she wasn't going to insist it because he's a court officer. So this is contradictory. You're saying that the judge applied the law in an unconstitutional fashion when she made everyone in the courtroom, other than court officers, hand their phones over to the marshal because you have been known for filming things. And she is adhering to a rule that the only ones who can film are those who submit a request, like our Nevada judges. That doesn't make her biased. To him it does because, well, he was unaware that you have to fill out a request form to uh, uh, video record the court proceedings. I mean, he is a journalist after all, and, uh, well, he should be able to film uh, to his heart's content, according to him. Uh, but uh, he, he was just unaware of the uh, request form. I mean, our Nevada judges, of course, was aware of the request form. I mean, I was made aware of it whenever I did my research on the filming procedures within the Nevada court system. Uh, yeah, so they're easy to look up. Believe me, they're easy to find. But uh, Chile, who uh, is a 20-year constitutional law scholar, it's almost impossible for him to look up because he's just... Uh, too incompetent to uh, be able to do so. I mean, that 20 years of legal st study has really stunted the growth of his brain. Now, if you're arguing she was biased against him because she gave him extra time because of how he acted at the end, the trial was already over. And she has the discretion to do this. Remember? She gave mid-range sentences. So that won't show an abuse of discretion. Would it show bias? Well, they did bring up a good point on Chile's side. If they've looked at 200 cases and they found that in every time that she's convicted somebody, she's never sentenced them to jail, that would definitely raise questions. Is that in this brief? I don't see it. The court did not enforce a universal prohibition on recording. Actually, it kind of did, except for those who comply with the rules. And now this is supposed to be a violating equal protection clause. Listen, you go into a courthouse, you surrender your rights right away. It's on the it's on the doors. Hey, you can be subject to arrest. You can be subject to search. You got to consent to go through the scanners. And if you walk into a judge's courtroom, she has the right to enforce security. In her mind, this was a security issue. She didn't want it done. He will rely upon the case I cited in his opening brief regarding the implied will rely more interrupters. You're going to say first, then say second and third. Don't say first and then switch to however. They go into a little bit of analysis here. I looked at the Echeverria, Echeverria case, and the idea is, is that you don't have to prove actual bias. A reasonable person looking at the 
things holistically could say that even if the judge isn't trying to be biased, there's a tendency to think that he, he or she could be based on whatever. Well, if you're saying it's because of the phone thing, you're not going to win on that. It was all cited wrong. So was it, this is actually page 1130. Uh, you would revise these sentences. They're clearly word, ineffective assistance accounts. This is all word salad. I started knocking things out. Would rely upon what? Why do you even use it? It's just a search? Use active voice. Use uh, different form of verb tenses. In this case, more ends. This is all a sideshow here. The convictions were based on conduct. If this was uh, the First Amendment issues, once again, they were not even described in this brief with any kind of clarity. So they're saying that me didn't describe them or, bri or brief them or use them to wipe out the charges. But I don't see them doing that here either. Kind of funny, right? Also, by claiming that she's biased, she also granted you can trial continuances when you wanted them. And so, you know, I don't really see anything better here. This is something that happens uh, during trial. You don't get a perfect trial. You're supposed to get a fair trial. All conclusory. They finally bring up Wilson, but they don't really do uh, much to discuss it. And then wherefore, you don't really need to say that. He respectfully, as opposed to disrespectfully, requests it. Hmm. All right, so I'm back out of the land of Oz. Uh, there's nothing here that I see that's going to change anything. This was just a bunch of words all thrown on paper. It doesn't really do anything for me. It doesn't help move the needle. It's basically referencing the Floyd case, the Rodney King case. It's like uh, grandstanding, like he's the grand victim here. Uh, I see the convictions not being changed uh there's real no in-depth analysis is all superficial well that's the end of the video folks but let me give uh, a minute to explain something to chili as far as uh professional writing goes i mean uh there's a lot more expectations in uh the professional world such as law and uh science and everything like that as to how you write your papers and everything like that. I mean, you just can't go uh, the kindergarten route, write everything up and uh, expect it to pass the muster. You just can't uh, do improper research and expect it to pass the smell test. No, no, no. That's not how it works in the professional world. All those things that they try to teach you in uh, grammar school, middle school, high school, junior high, or whatever, all those uh, uh, aspects of proper English, uh, run-on sentences, uh, the proper use of commas, semicolons, colons, periods, everything like that, quotation marks, the, the different tones you can set with uh, your writing, everything else that matters is all taught to you at a fundamental level in those early classes. And when you get into college, you are exposed to more of it. They'll help you along. They'll teach it to you again. But after a certain point, you have to uh, get cheat sheets and everything like that if you're still a bit lost on it. I mean, most people, even in college, have a hard time writing until they get the uh, rhythm going. I mean, you have to practice, practice, practice. And it is clear from your writings that... Well, you have had no practice in any way, shape, or form, and nobody to critique you at all. I mean, if you had somebody going over your work, then maybe you would uh, uh, be a bit better of a writer, because that's one good thing to have, is somebody to ch check your work. That way, you know where your mistakes are. I mean, you can read your work all day and get a lot of... Uh, it ironed out, but does somebody else read your work? Yeah, you might not be able to find anything else. They might be able to, but yeah, it's a vicious little cycle. you got to continuously revise your work. You may not get it within the first four drafts of your paper, but eventually you'll get it nailed down. So you might want to think about investing in uh, cheat sheets like these that you can get off of Amazon.com, or you could uh, walk into a university bookstore and uh, 
get a few of them. I mean, they're great aids. Even if you're a master writer, you can still benefit from looking at these from time to time and revising, constantly revising. But you know what? You're never going to learn. So why even bother wasting my breath? I mean, I can give these tips to everybody else, but you, you won't use them. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. You don't want to go to jail. For what? You read this. Yeah. I don't have to listen read to anything. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not listening. Gosh. I'm not. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. You suck. They think they know it all. What's the Third Amendment, punk? Tell me the Third Amendment and I'll leave. What's the Third Amendment? What's the Third Amendment and I'll f***ing leave right now? What's the Third Amendment? Tell me. What's the Third Amendment? Most definitely. Because you don't understand why I'm here with a camera doesn't mean I have to get out of here. Doesn't mean I have to leave. Doesn't mean I have to go. <clears throat> that sort of thing. Well, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to have to enforce the, the CT and have you leave the property. Um, per the postmaster, per the lead. Uh, per the um, the uh, the person, the landlord of this uh, facility. Uh, so with that said, um, I've got too many entities. I know. You gave me a warning to get off the property. I got off the okay. property. I need to name date of birth. No, sir. You're either going to provide or you're going to jail. I'm going to remain silent, sir. Okay. You want my name and date of birth? Put your hands right now. He chose poorly. Morning, Deputy Regan, St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Two reasons I'm stopping you. One, Pine Island the speed limit's 25. You're going 36. Okay. That's still 10 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. It's 25. No, it's not 25? So, I was going at 35. So, that's 10 over. You just told me that you're going 10 over the posted speed limit. It, yes, you did. You said you're going 35, right? Yeah, That's a 25. 25. No, ma'am. It's it. The whole thing's 25. Okay. The other issue is your license plate cover is illegal. You can't have a tinted license plate cover over your license plate. Hello, ma'am. Hi. How are you? Okay. I'm doing good. Well, you're detained right now. You're not free to leave. Okay. Yeah, Why? I've been calling after you. You know you are not to be on campus. No. You put the phone down. She yes. asked me to leave and I left. No, ma'am. So you, you guys... You are now under arrest. You guys are arresting me for nothing. No. You know you've been arrested for this before. Dumbass! You dumbass! You're a dumbass. Such a dumbass. You're an ass. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's... Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that? You know why you're kicking me out? Because you don't want wa someone watching a movie in the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know some of y'all are disappointed. I'm disappointed. Um, I hope that you will continue to watch this channel because this channel has brought more good than negativity.